I mean, I like it. Uh, overall, I like it. I, I think, you know, he does come from a system uh, in the pass game and run game that has been effective, um, you know, over the long term. And if we're setting up this team, this offense long term, I think he's a good guy to bring in. Uh, as far as the rushing attack goes, I don't think much changes. I still think the philosophy is to try to get, you know, Shady and these guys along the perimeter. But the there's a slight tweak because, yeah, we played a lot of gap and man schemes, you know, at, utilizing down blocks at the point of attack and hitting certain holes. Um, we also, ha you know, we've been a lot of zone concepts, zone run concepts over the two years uh, under Greg Roman and then under Anthony Lynn last year, even more so last year. Um, so I don't think there'll be major changes, but the plan of attack does change a little bit under the outside zone or what Alex Gibbs used to term the, the wide zone runs. And that that's just, uh, you know, a, a running back aiming for the tight end outside, trying to trying to cut back. And that's what this, this scheme does. It tries to displace uh, defenders, you know, one-gap defenders, move by moving the gaps with the offensive linemen, all the offensive linemen blocking in the same direction and, and getting that cut back, which when you have, uh, you know, LaShawn McCoy and Mike Gillisley, hopefully they bring him back because I think he'll be a great fit for this. When you have those kind of cut back runners, it, it, it could be very dangerous. And again, long-term, thinking this this scheme has been effective long term so i think it's a good move to bring in this rushing attack welcome into the cover one film room today i want to break down new offensive coordinator rick dennison's base offense starting with the zone run specifically the outside zone run game it's a scheme that stresses no negatives two to three yard gains are okay and this is important because as good as the bills run game was in 2016 they led the league in negative rushes with 56. with defenses going to more one gap fronts to keep it simple what better way to combat that than moving the gaps and that is exactly what zone concepts do. Former Broncos coordinator Alex Gibbs always taught linemen to have their hands in line with the shoelaces of the center, which it appears that Dennison teaches it as well. Linemen typically line up deeper along the line of scrimmage so that the first drop step helps them gain depth. Dennison will use a lot of motion to make each zone run play look different, and that is what he does here out of 11 personnel. This role as a moving tight end will be perfect for Charles Clay. The outside zone run is actually intended to cut back, but the running back's track starts wide, usually aiming for the tight end. Pre-snap, he is reading the end man on the line of scrimmage. If that technique is wide, the pre-snap read will eliminate the bounce. The offensive line blocks to the play side, and the players are responsible for their play side gap. If no one is in their play side gap, then they move on to the second level. As the back gets the ball, he is surveying the blocks on the read of the number two and three. The uncovered left guard climbed to the second level and cut the inside linebacker giving a nice lane for the running back to bend it and get upfield. So here is the outside zone run where the running back bent it back instead of bouncing it or banging it. You know a couple things I noticed out of my film review and just taking a look at you know just taking a look at different things that's been done with this offense. Some people might argue that it's not really Rick Dennison's offense, that it might be Gary Kubiak's offense. Right. But either way, you know, regardless of who's calling the play, the scheme is still the same. You know, and mm -hmm. I'm sure he would call it the same way, whether it's he or Gary making the play call. One of the things I noticed is that fullback and you know the H back usage should kind of stay about the same. You know, yes. I, I mean, and in fact. I, one of the things I noticed is that Denver last year used a lot of the the H back, but almost on like where you were talking about cutbacks, mm -hmm. there there was a lot of rushing plays that I saw where the line would block you know on a stretch play to the right, mm -hmm. but the full black would full back would block to the left in order to open up one of those cutback lanes. It's almost like it was a designed cutback run, and they right. run a and lot. That's of that. done a, a lot too because of the blocking changes now, where you know their chop blocks are being eliminated. And that cutback um, is predicated on the, obviously the backside, uh, you know, cutback block. And and a lot of times when you're running this wide zone, the backside guard, backside tackle are cutting guys. But depending on the alignment of that defensive lineman, you can't really cut him because again, zone blocking is uh, it, at the first level, at the defensive line level, is typically uh, categorized by um, you know overtaking blocks. So it may start off as a double team. <clears throat> And then have one guy scoop up, overtake that uh, defender, and then scoop up to the second level. So sometimes you'll have two guys engaged with a backside um, defender, but you can't chop them because of the new rules. So yep. they will, you know, there's different tweaks and ways to block that up. And one way is to do that with uh, a moving tight end on a wham block, on the back block. Um, 
uh, a fullback like uh, Andy, I think his name was Andy Janovich for the Broncos last year, who did a great job of cutting the backside three technique or, or two mm-hmm. eye technique. So, oh no, it, I like that a wham block. I'll just yes, call sir. that a George Michael block. The wham. <laughs> Good lord. That I mean, it's only, the sky's the limit, and that's that's what's exciting about this scheme because again, long term, it has gotten a lot out of guys with way less talent than we have on this offense. Well, let me ask you a question then. Uh, you said with the talent increasing the uh, offensive production. Right. You, like Tyrod Taylor, mm-hmm. you think he can run a successful scheme here in Buffalo and get the kind of production you're talking about um, with his arm talent? Absolutely. You know why? First of all, the run game. Second of all, one thing he does really well is throw on the run. And giving him that run pass option, along the perimeter, off these zone, wide zone runs, will only help him. When he got outside the pocket, he wasn't bad, and, and he does throw on the one, or on the run well. So I think that the, the two coming together, I do think that will benefit, not to mention, you throw in this wide zone stretch, you're not just, you're not just stretching the defense vertically with Sammy Watkins. You're, you're stretching the, the second-level defenders horizontally and giving Tyrod the option to run it as well. So... A lot has to be worried about when you're running these wide fakes and boot and naked bootlegs. So I think it'll not only open up the the run game, but it'll also open up the opportunities where he can dink and dunk it underneath and whatnot and at the second level. Again, getting Tyrod in a situation where he's comfortable. I mean, his completion percentage on, on play actions last year and play action percentage as far as how many times mm-hmm. he run play action last year was actually down. You know, like I said, they tried working more into the, the drop back passing game, but his completion percentage on play action was six six percent higher. So he's better off a play action.